Okay, here we go. So this is 11.2 in your textbook. It says, uh, question one, Jasmine wrote different numbers from one to 10 on each of 10 small pieces of paper. So I think we already did this one, but I'm gonna do it real quick. So we're gonna call event two, writing these numbers. Okay, so when your table's complete, you have this. And the question says, uh, how many, or sorry, the total number of possible outcomes. Well, based on our table, our sample space is in here and we have 20 different possible outcomes. If we did a tree diagram, so if we did a tree diagram, we'd actually do kind of like tree exploding bushes instead of, uh, or, or bush diagrams instead of tree diagrams, it would look like this. And at the end of each branch, we could say this branch here represents T3 and so on and so forth. There would be 20 outcomes with that. But the grade eight connection is that if you take the event number one, which is the paper, which there are 10 possible outcomes, and you take your outcome with coin, which there are two possible outcomes, the product of each, out, or each um, outcome themselves, the product of those will yield your possible outcomes, which in this case is 20. So the real connection that we're having here, you know, if you want to calculate how many possible outcomes there are, simply multiply uh, the number of possible outcomes for each event and multiply them together, you get your number of total possible outcomes. For question five, it says a coin is flipped and a six-sided dice is rolled. I think we changed this one to a four, didn't we? Did we? Okay. So a coin is flipped and a four-sided dice is rolled and a marble is randomly selected from a bag. Because there are three events, one, two, and three, the only thing we can use is a tree diagram to organize these outcomes. So if you do your tree diagram, if you do a tree diagram, you have something that looks like this, which is pretty chaotic. Uh, but if you look at the end of each branch, and if I took a highlighter, uh, for example, this branch right here from heads with my first, four with my second, and a yellow, that would be one possible outcome for what could happen if you did those three events. And if I look at all the branches and I put a check mark at the end, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 here, 12 here. So I have a total of 24 possible outcomes from those events. So the answer for B is 24. Instead of doing it with a tree diagram, event one, which was the coin, has two possible outcomes. Uh, the die has four possible numbers that can be rolled and the marble has three. The product of all three events, two times four is eight, eight times three is 24. So the total possible outcomes is 24. Remember the top number means favorable outcomes. So what I'm looking for, we're not looking for a specific event and our bottom number is our possible outcomes and that's all we have to really use to find how many total possible outcomes there are. Question seven says, Tony has four different pairs of pants and six different shirts. How many shirt pair combinations can he make? Now, some of you, when I looked at your diagrams or looked at your answers, some of you actually went and did uh, pants one, pants two, pants three, and pants four, and actually made like a one of these. Well, it was only six, isn't it? I would say that would be the worst choice to do. If I was doing something because there's only two, I would probably do this. I do um, pant one, pant two, pant three, and pant four. And if you want to get creative, you can make them blue jeans and khakis or whatever. And up here, you could have shirt one, shirt two, shirt three, shirt four, shirt five, and shirt six. And if I examine this, I could see clearly that there are um, 24 possible combinations of shirts, pants. This one here would be wearing the shirt number five with pants number three. This one over here would be pants number four with shirt number two. The easier way to do it is simply take the shirt, which are six possible outcomes, the pants, which are four, and multiply them to get 24 possible outcomes, 24 possible combinations, excuse me. Any questions on that so far? Good. Question 11. Make up a question that would give the following number of possible outcomes. Would anyone like to share their creative story that deals with 2, 4, and 5? Anybody? Any brave soul? 
Nobody? Okay, I'll make up my own. Uh, if there were two boys, two boys, and four girls, and five chaperones, and they were going on a date, how many different combinations could there be? Well, there could be, in total, 40 different combinations of boy, girl, chaperone, date arrangements that could be made so that the boy and the girl would be thoroughly embarrassed by whichever chaperone they had. Uh, I'm sure my daughter will be very happy to have me chaperone her first date. I'm positive she would like that. But that would be an example that I could make up, and I'm sure yours are very creative as well. Question 15 says, determine the number of four-digit numbers that can be used. So I'm going to draw it first. And I'm going to visually represent a four-digit number with four boxes. In this box can be the number one through four, this box, this box, and this box. So any numbers that can be created, this is an example and this is an example. 1111 would be another example. But really, there are four possible outcomes for this box, four for this, four for this, and four for this. And the grade A connection is if you take the possible outcomes for each event, this being event one, event two, event three, and event four, and I multiply them together, we would find that there would be 256 possible combinations. One of them would be 1111. The second one would be 1112, 1113, 1114. Then we go 1121, 11122, and so on and so forth until our head exploded. But we would have 256 possible combinations of numbers for that question. Any questions on that one? Are we good? Question 15 uh, is the one we just did, right? Question 16, the last one says, how many car license plates can be made if, and we scratched out all this stuff here, so we got rid of this. And we changed it to uh, an island license plate. So for an island license plate, you have Anna Green Gables with her pigtails and her little hat with the little thing on it and her dress with the, I don't know, with, you know she just hands or something, I don't know. And you have a letter and a letter and a number and a number and a number. So the question really is how many different types of license plates can there be in PEI? And one of the things we found out by calling up the uh, Access PEI today is there are no letter O's in the letter combinations because they look like zeros. So for the first letter, there are 25 different letters that can go in that first space. There are 25 different letters that can go in the second space. Since the numbers 0 through 9 could be used here, there are 10 different numbers that could be used in that space, 10 different numbers in the second space, and 10 different numbers in the, in the third space. And really, to get the number of combinations, the grade 8 connection is you can multiply all of those together to figure out how many combinations you could make. And the answer is 625,000 different combinations of license plates can be made on PEI. Right? And that's just by having two letters and three numbers. And on PEI, I think the number of registered motor, well, the number of people that live on the island is 130,000. So I'm pretty sure every man, woman, and child doesn't have five cars. So with that combination of letters and numbers, we will probably be guaranteed never to have repeat license plates on PEI. All right, if you have any more questions, let me know. We can go over other questions if you need help.